Oh boy, I get to talk about Master Puppets for like the millionth time. Let's go. Alright, well, the year is 1986. This, this monumental album would drop in March. And unfortunately, it would be the last we would hear of Cliff because he would not survive the tour. This is my favorite album of them. And realistically, I don't think that's ever going to change either because it's just... It It quite literally started my entire musical journey. I made a video about this album like only a couple months into my channel, so that was really long ago and I doubt many of you saw it. So, to recap, basically this shit was in my dad's collection and... I saw it, and I, I was looking at it, like, this, and, um, like, the Ozzy, uh, artworks, it actually kind of scared me, and I, funny enough, I thought Metallica was the, um, the name of, like, the genre, and not the band, because, you know, metal's in the name, but whatever, I, I was, like, fucking, I don't know how long, I was in single-digit ages, okay, so, but yeah, I didn't listen to it. No, I put it down because it was scary. There's tombstones and uh, it was it was creepy. Master of Puppets, I don't know what that means. Flash forward to sixth grade and my badass English teacher brings this album in and he makes us he made us do journal writings every uh, week and he made us write a story while listening to Orion because obviously it's instrumental. And doesn't have lyrics. So we made our own story to it. And I recognized it from my dad's collection. So I went home. Because I really liked Orion. So really that was the first song I remember hearing. I probably heard others before it. But Orion was the first one. I was like, okay. That's Metallica. I understand now. So I went home. Put this fucking CD in. I skipped Battery. Because I wanted to hear the title track first. So Master of Puppets was my second song. And then I finished the whole album. And I did not like Damage Inc. the first time I heard it. Uh, which obviously changed later on. But uh, yeah. And from there, it fucking started. And then that kicked off the, uh, the four-year Nothing But Metallica binge that consumed me between the years 2008 to 2012. So it's a very important album to me. And seriously... People, uh, some people like Ride the Lightning more. Some people go for Injustice for All because it's more technical. But yeah, this album is too important to me to uh, have anything be higher. It's the best. The best one. I like all the songs. Even the one in last place, which is going to piss a lot of people off. I'm sorry. But something's got to come in last. And with an album this goddamn good, it's going to piss someone off regardless. Because I can see any song on here being someone's favorite on it. So, it's it's produced once again really well by Fleming. Although, I do like the production. Like, the sound of Ride the Lightning more. But this one is still really damn good. And, yeah man. It, it's, it's, it's only exploded again due to Stranger Things. And, you know what? 40 years later, or like... 37 years later and I think it's going to keep exploding in random points because this shit is one of the pinnacles of metal. But without further ado, let's start ranking these eight songs. And unfortunately in the last place is going to be Disposable Heroes. Yes, I know I half you already left. But honestly... I like a lot of aspects of the song, mainly the chorus. I think the fucking chorus with the, the back to the front shit is my favorite chorus on this album. It gets me fucking pumped as hell. However, I think the verses are kind of whatever. Like the, the chugging single note riffs, not too crazy about that, although I love the lyrics. The lyrics especially in the song. The chorus and the lyrics, I think those are the highlights. But yeah, from the intro to the verse to the that fast riff on like the fourth fret, I don't want to fucking play it. Um, but yeah, never been too crazy about that. Even the like the bridge and the solo section, not too crazy about that either. 
Although the uh, the pause and the, the I was born for dying, and then it comes in with the fucking fast riff. That part is good. But yeah, beyond that, that that's about it for me on this song. And coming up next is Damage Inc., the song I did not like the first time I heard it. And though I do like it now, it's never been one of my favorites on here. Although, yes, it might be one of their thrashiest songs. And the lyrics are pretty cool with the whole idea of you going to work in this factory and they're just fucking murdering you the whole time. That's pretty cool. And especially the 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 fucking the bridge riff, the, the like the you know you know the one I'm talking about. This is the riff that everyone seems to absolutely love, and for good reason. It's a really great riff. The solo is pretty kick ass too. I guess it's mainly the uh, <laughs> one it like the fucking at the end of the chorus when he's like damage incorporated. I think it's kind of dumb, but uh, yeah. Beyond that, it's it's a decent song. Just yeah, never one of my favorites. And then we have Leper Messiah. I think this is the one where I'm like, okay. Maybe, I think out of all these songs, this song has the fewest people who would say this is their favorite song in the album. And honestly, I think it's because it's just one of those forgotten ones. I feel like every album has one of those ones where it's a little forgotten. Like, Kill Em All, I think Phantom Lord is the one Trapped Under Ice on uh, Ride of Lightning, and this one has Leper Messiah. But yeah, simply put, I think this is just a really jammy-ass song. Especially, I fucking love the verse riff. da da ba na na da 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 It's a fun riff to play, and the chorus is great too, and the bridge especially, the da na 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 da na 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 da 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 That whole part, I think, is really great, and... Just, and, and the solo too, the, especially the beginning of it, like where it's low-key kind of sweeps. I'm not sure if it actually is though, probably not, but it sounds like they are. And then, yeah, it's like, like when it gets to the end of the song and the, the fucking, the toms come in, the do, 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 and then the fucking verse riff comes in, and then they stop and you hear someone be like, yeah, that's it. And then the ba da na 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 I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a fun song. I think it's low-key kind of underrated. Although, yeah, it's not... One of my favorites off the album, clearly. And up next, we have The Thing That Should Not Be. Once again, a song that was bettered in s &M, just like For Whom the Bell Tolls. Because I, I love the intro that the symphony does to this song on the s &M version. And then, like, the fucking the, uh, James vocal effects... Uh, sometimes when he ends a fucking verse. But yeah, live version's great. And even the studio one, it's it's one of the chunkiest riffs, man. Da da ba ba na da ba na da ba na. Yeah, and of course, this is the second of three songs about Cthulhu. So, yeah, it's, it's a solid-ass jam that's a little slowed down, but it allows it to be more brutal. So yeah, really good song. And then we have the album opener, Battery, which of course is just, again, one of those songs that I think Ride the Lightning kind of started the Metallica album format where you have the really fast beginning and ending songs. They, they swapped the instrumental and the ending song. With the exception of this first rule. Every, a lot of these albums start and end with the fastest song. The second song is the title track. The third one is like the slow down uh, heavier song. And the fourth song is the clean song, right? And then, then you have the second to last song, which is the instrumental. And... Yeah, besides, if you swapped Cthulhu and Creeping Death on Ride the Lightning, it would fit this format more. But you look at that one, Master, Justice, and Death Magnetic. All these albums follow this format, and I think it's pretty neat. But yeah, Battery, what else needs to be said? The intro, love the acoustic riff, and the way it starts, it just gets, it gets you so, so hyped for this album. And especially that fucking bridge... 
And then, you know, of course, Lars is uh, going ham on double bass again. And yeah, it's it's a fucking, it's a fun ass song to play uh, on any instrument. And yeah, great ass opener. Solid ass shit. Again, the ver- the bridge riff is fucking kick ass. And yeah, what else needs to be said? Good ass song. And now the bronze medal goes to the song that started it all, Orion. It's tough to pick a favorite of their instrumentals. But I would probably have to say Orion because, yeah, it's Cliff at its finest. Love the way it's the song starts, the fucking, that verse riff. And when he's going ham in the chorus section, I don't know what you'd call it. And then the whole middle part where it's like super, like, uh, I don't want to say classical, but yeah, the, the, the guitar notes, the way they wrote this whole bridge when it goes clean, I think is just some of their absolute finest work. And, and even solo wise, there's, uh, there's one particular solo that does a line that I really fucking love. I think it's the one right before the bass solo. But it goes like, I just love when it goes down. Oh, I love the way it sounds. And I th- yeah, that's when the bass solo comes in. And yeah, it's a fuck. It's Orion, bro. I don't know, man. You, s- you probably you probably know it. So what else do I need to s- even say about this goddamn song? It's just one of metal's finest instrumentals ever fucking written. And up next, we have Master of Puppets, and I'm just now realizing that both Ride the Lightning and Master, my third favorite song is the instrumental, and my second favorite is the, the title track. I, they're, they're just good. What else can I say? But yeah, bro, it's fucking Master of Puppets. I mean, every fucking riff in this song is absolutely iconic. The riffs, or the, the lyrics are absolutely iconic. The whole drug thing. Uh, the, the bridge. I mean, literally every single fucking riff in this song is perfect. And then, yeah, the Stranger Things finale opened so much, so many people's more eyes to uh, who who thought that it was just Enter Sandman for Metallica. But then here's this fucking song that they did before, and it's like way goddamn better. I ha- I have no other words. I think you know exactly why Master of Puppets would be my second favorite song on this album. Hell, it's probably most people's favorite songs, but not this guy. The next song we're about to talk about is my favorite song of theirs, period. So obviously it's going to be my favorite song off Master of Puppets 2. And, of course... Sanitarium is the first song of theirs that I kind of learned in full on guitar. Although I've never been good at like the whole ending section. I've never been good at that part. Even the first two solos I actually memorized by heart at some point. Was never able to play them, but still I knew them at some point. I don't know anymore. But yeah, man, I, I just love everything about this song i mean down to the intro and the harmonics and that riff and oh the chorus and i don't even know what to say at this point i'm just saying the same shit i've been saying every fucking riff is great verses are awesome chorus is awesome the bridge is awesome and this is the song that uh was they have the riff on here later on in the song that was pretty much taken straight out of tom sawyer I mean, hell, they even thanked uh, Getty, Neil, and Alex in the linear notes 
uh, because yeah, they pretty much just lifted a, saw, a riff off there and put it in here. It's at least the same format. Um, and yeah, obviously, me being Rush, it's like my second favorite band ever. So, of course, that just only boosts this song's awesomeness. And yeah, I don't know, man. I just I just have no words. It's easier to describe why songs are lower than higher because it's just these ones up here are just the fucking best and I think they're perfect. And that's enough. That's enough rambling. Um, that's it for Master of Puppets. Let me know what how you'd rank these songs down below. And I'm sorry if you relate Disposable Heroes, but I wish I could be there with you. And with that, we say goodbye to Cliff Burton. We say goodbye to... We actually say goodbye to bass temporarily. <laughs> Period. Because on the next album, Mr. Jason Newsted would get no justice at all. And I will see you next time for that.